25 years or so, and uh, especially focusing on the built environment. So that we, I'd like to <coughs> show you some of the, the key parts that so far we have found through our XP research. Okay. So, um, first of all, I'd like you to share with me how much of time we spend within the built environment for one day. How much percentage of the 24 hours we spend indoors? The answer is usually more than 9%. If you go to picnic, maybe 80%, but usually more than 9%. So assuming that our lifespan is 80 years, it means more than 70 years we spend indoors. <coughs> so whenever we discuss about global environmental issue, global environmental issue, we discuss about the concentration of the CO2, degradation of the forest, that kind of things. But we shouldn't forget we live indoors more than 70 years of our life. So it is very important for us to make connection the built environment and the global environment. That is what I want to say in the very beginning. And over the last 25 years or 30 years, what I have come to have the image is something like this. We call it nested structure in English, and in Japanese, we call it irekokozo. Irekokozo is the kind, you may know the souvenir the box made in Hakone. Small box, you open it, and then again, small box. That kind of thing is called nested structure, So, we are here, our body temperature is 37 degrees in the quarter. And we live in the indoor environment, as I already pointed out. And, for example, <coughs> ICU campus, located in Musashi Sakai. This is within the urban environment. The urban environment is surrounded by the regional environment. The biggest regional environment is the global environment. In that way, all those structures are connected to each other. So <clears throat> we all know that the, the sun gives the, much of the energy with the temperature of 5,700 degrees C. And uh, everybody will answer that the solar energy is the ultimate energy that we can use. But the reason why we can use this is because we are surrounded by the very, very cold universe. This is minus 270 degrees C. So according to the thermodynamics, to produce work, it is always necessary to have the two temperature differences, high temperature and low temperature, so that the global environmental system works in the <clears throat> as a heat engine. High temperature is the sun, 5,700 degrees C, and the, the temperature will sink. That is the universe, minus 270 degrees. All the things work within this principle as a nested structure. So we need to understand how it works and how our human body works in relation to the built environment and then try to uh, make a better sustainable built environment. That, that is the goal for us. So <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to um, show you uh, the final comment to be made in this lecture. The, the two sentences here are the comments that I like to make through my lecture today. First of all, the passive technology, I will explain what, what the passive technology is later. Passive technology is the very basic of the uh, making the sustainable and the healthy built environment. That is the number one priority. Second, 
there is very, very few types of active technology. Active technology, I will again explain later. There is not much technology, active technology, which really exactly fits the passive technology. So in the future to come, we need to develop another type of active technology within the 50 years or something from now on. Especially we experience the 3.11, the nuclear power accident. So let me explain what the passive and what the active technology. We suppose that there is a yacht. Why yacht go forward? This is because we can make a smart use of the wind coming from that direction to us uh, on the yacht. But in the boat, all the wind against the wind is the resistance to the use of the oil. So the same wind you evaluate totally different way. So the building should be firstly designed to be something like yacht, as we can make use of the wind nearby, the sun nearby, and so on. To do so, it is very important for us to have nice building material, nice opening, and the nice location of the rooms, nice location of the corridors, that kind of things. And also, in old buildings, there is much room to make a very nice improvement with small ideas. So that makes you uh, have less energy use, less energy consumption, with higher uh, level of comfort. Okay? So, Active technology, that is why we say active. Active means the production of the work. That is the, pur the original purpose of, of the heat engine. And the example of the extremeness is, as you know, the, for example, Fushima nuclear power. It, it is the extremest uh, uh, active technology. The, <coughs> I cannot uh, talk about much about the nuclear power plant today, but the, the center of the fuel rock, the temperature is about 2,600 degrees C, and the water temperature is 300 degrees C or something. So the temperature gradient within the nuclear power plant is 10,000 or maybe much more, but within the buildings, like this lecture hall, the inside temperature is 20 degrees C and outdoor temperature is, for example, 0 degrees C or something. So the temperature gradient is very, very small. So it means that the, what we should have is mainly from the passive with the smaller temperature difference. This big temperature difference in the power plant may be very efficient in having the on, but not for the everyday life. That, that is my opinion. Okay? So, in terms of the um, building technology, um, I, I think it's very important for us to take a look at not only the uh, system, uh, building components, and so on, but also how the human being behave with the built environment. When people open the windows, what kind of moment they switch on the lighting fixture or switch off lighting fixture and so on. And that it is very important for us to understand how the people uh, sense the change of the light, heat, moisture, air, and the sensation comes to perception and recognition, and then if the change of level is so big, then you may open the window or you may shut the window and so on.
so on. So the cycle continues. So the cycles continue so that the energy use, energy consumption becomes smaller and smaller, or the energy consumption becomes higher and higher. Both are possible. But the design goal or the operation of buildings goal should be to the former. What I mean is to make this cyclic process of the human being to make the extra consumption minimized. So I'd like to show some of the, the findings uh, from the new model of XP. So what I just mentioned is the, uh, we need, of course, hardware is very important, but uh, at the same time, we need soft technology, software. We all know that the, whenever we use computers, we need hardware, but also software. But the architecture is the same. Usually, uh, architects, building designers, uh, building service engineers, structural engineers, they are all too much concerned about the uh, designing stage, from designing stage to the construction stage and completion, and then they, they forget what will happen after the completion. But after the completion, Completion is the start of the building, and the whole building life, we need the rational software. So, I think, according to um, my experience, probably not only in Japan but also in other countries, too, too much focus was placed on the uh, construction and design in the very beginning, but uh, not on the uh, way of living, the software and so on. And, uh, there are so much to be done in this area. And uh, <clears throat> I I'm going to give you um, some very interesting um, XG view on the human body in relation to the uh, thermal well-being, especially during winter time. But uh, before going into that uh, <coughs> topics, I'd like to, you to share with me uh, this rather dumb question, okay? Uh, there is a sun. The surface temperature is 5,700 degrees C. And we know that the, the sun is far away from the Earth. But now we can calculate the density coming out from the sun, because we can measure the intensity of the solar radiation on the surface of the ground and also the outside atmosphere. So the, the sun is a kind of small circle, so that we know the distance, so that we can estimate the whole amount of solar energy. And then also we can calculate the weight of the sun, so that we can have the number, the density of the solar heat, the watt per kilogram. We can do the same for human body. Human body, almost 100 watt kilogram. Of course, it is quite different from thin or your fat or your big or your short, but appropriately speaking, this is 100. You, you can divide with your weight, okay? So my question is three choices. Which is the right answer? Number one, of course, density is much higher in the case of the sun. Number two, all equal. Number three, human being equal. Which is the right answer? Very dumb question. Could, could you raise your hand? Okay. So, who is the number one? 
Okay. The second. Third. Quite uniformly separated. <laughs> <laughs> so the right answer is sad. Okay. Then the next question is how big? Okay. The answer is It may sound very strange, but this is true. The sun is so big, but, but we, what is happening within the sun is quite simple. But what, what is happening inside our body is quite complex. And um, the, the surface area per body is very, very big in the human body. The sun so huge, so the surface area is relatively very, very small. That's why the center of the sun is so at very, very high. To maintain our body temperature at 37 degrees, it is very important for us to have this size. Okay. Um, you, you may know some rat as a, a pet. This is just like this side. They also have the body temperature almost around 37 degrees. And whenever you observe how they live, we usually eat three times a day. They probably eat, I don't know, maybe 20 times a day or something. Otherwise, their body temperature may go down. And it is very, very dangerous. To lose the heat. So, if your size is just like rat, it is very, very dangerous for you to listen to my talk. Yes. So, we all are very happy to be at this size. So, this is the very basic uh, knowledge that we, I'd like to share with you in the very beginning of having the knowledge. So, anyway, the density is so high so that it is very important for us to uh, give off some heat, not only in summertime, but also in wintertime. In wintertime, space heating, usually people believe that it is to heat the body. But you don't, you don't need to heat our body because always some heat is emitted from the body. So you need to get rid of some heat. Okay. It may sound a little contradictory, but, but uh, it, even in the space heating, it is need, it is necessary for us to get rid of some heat. So the space heating, the purpose is to make the space in which we can lose our unnecessary heat as efficiently, efficiently as possible. Okay? So that, that is the very important thing. So in doing so, there are only four parts. One is radiation, the second convection, conduction, and evaporation. Evaporation is very, very important, especially in summertime, as we all know through experience. And uh, radiation may sound, uh, you, you may not be so familiar with radiation, but uh, these days uh, everybody, almost everybody knows that radioactivity through the uh, nuclear crisis. But the, the, this radiation, the thermal radiation, this is totally safe. And uh, I just wrote one thermometer. This small instrument can measure the surface temperature without touching. So let me um, measure the surface temperature. All the surface of the ceiling give off some radiation as the thermal radiation. And this sensor, this thermometer detects that radiation and 
make a small calculation and give me the number here. This is the temperature, the surface temperature. So, what do you think the surface temperature over there? Below 20 degrees C or higher than 20 degrees C? So, who do you think lower than 20 degrees C? So, others are thinking about temperature higher than 20 degrees C? Okay, I can give you the number. 25.7 degrees C. Quite high. And probably the concrete surface this is the concrete, I don't know. Probably a little bit lower than 25.7 degrees. The reason why I say so is that I know the surface temperature of the light bulb are much higher, probably 40 degrees C or 50 degrees. So what, what I'm measuring here is the average of the surface temperature of the light bulb and the surface of concrete and so on. So in winter time, like today, the surface of the light bulb is a kind of heating apparatus, so that uh, not bad. But during summer time, I believe that the, in this lecture hall, without air conditioning, cooling, students must suffer from the heating from the bulb. So it is also very important for us to replace the light bulb with some more efficient bulb. That can reduce the uh, cooling demand during summer. So in this way, it is very important for us to uh, take a look at the built environment where we are now, and also at your home, at your offices, and so on, and uh, try to uh, make uh, some rational uh, measure, take a rational measure to uh, improve your space. Okay, I will skip some issue. And uh, I have tried to explain very briefly what, what the exergy is. I, as I already mentioned, exergy is the right concept to express consumption, and um, let me give you some small example. Supposing that there are two tanks, one is bigger, 20 liter, and the other 5 liter, and uh, the environment the temperature of the tank is 20 degrees C. The same is true for this smaller tank. And we raise the temperature of the water from 20 degrees C to 40 degrees C. And the Thermal energy input is, in this case, 1,674 kilojoules. Okay? And we do the same for this smaller tank. But uh, in this case, we raise the temperature from 20 degrees C to 100. And the amount of energy that we need to input is exactly the same. Okay? This is just according to the very basic of the thermal science. And please assume that you put your right hand into the bigger tank and your left hand into the smaller tank. What will happen? You will get hot in your left hand. But the energy is the same. We need to realize something is missing. And then, with the concept of energy, we can have these numbers. In this case, 55 kilometers. And in this case, 194. So it sounds quite consistent with what we can experience. Okay? I don't mean that the 3.5 times larger exergy gives you the burning of your hand, but uh, what we experience is qualitatively speaking consistent. Okay? And um, one other example is that uh, this is 
a um, very famous Jews experiment, uh, James Preston of Jew in mid 19th century. Uh, he prepared the small experimental apparatus with the wheel like this, with the water, and he put some weight like this and make it go down like this and turn the wheel. And then there is a friction between the blade and water so that the, the water is temperature gradually pops it up. In that way, to determine the equivalence of the water and the heat. Okay? So we do the same from 20 degrees C to 100 degrees C, falling down the weight like this. So how much is this? Okay? Supposing that, well, my weight is almost 73 kilograms. So I'd like to have 15 persons who have the same weight as mine. Okay? And then go up to the top of the 38-story building and fall down. Okay? <laughs> this is a joke, okay? <laughs> but uh, then the five liter of water will get water. Okay? So please imagine what, what we do this way. So it, it implicitly implies that the work or electricity we get from the top is very, very valuable. So it is nonsense to heat with electricity, especially with very, very poorly insulated buildings. It's really waste. Okay? Before 3.11, many uh, UTD companies advertise the use of electricity just for heat. And uh, it, it, it was nonsense, and uh, I was a little against about that idea. But now, many uh, people involved in the UTD companies and also engineers started to recognize that. So that I'd like to <coughs> let, let you know that this kind of image is very, very important. So with the concept of XG, um, this water has 194 kilos of thermal XG. And the potential energy before falling down, that is 1,674. In the concept of XG, the potential energy is exactly the same as potential density. So we can set up the XG balance equation for this case. So the input. 1,674 and 1,480 is exactly consumed for the rotation of the wheel or for the friction. And then we get this number of thermal energy. This is the result. So in this way, uh, we, can, uh, we can know how much is really consumed where that kind of thing. So we develop the XG theory for describing the lighting system, heating system, cooling system, and also the human body. And discuss what, what kind of things are happening within the human body and also in the built environment. So from now on, I would like to uh, give you some of the uh, key findings. First, lighting, and then heating in relation to the human body. And then probably I will run out of my OK? So now, most of you must be familiar with the, uh, these three types of plants. And we can, we, made an exit calculation for these lamps. 
So first of all, you cancel them and listen to them. How they look are quite similar, but the, what is happening is quite different. So left hand side, this is energy and this is excitation. Okay? And the white character shows the energy of excitation rate. So in this in terms of lamp, the energy input or energy input is 40 watt. Okay? And the output of heat is 26.2 and light is 13.8. So in terms of lamp, from the viewpoint of energy, of course we know that this is the lamp, but the heat is much bigger. So whether we should call it whether uh, heater or light. That is the issue. Okay? With the concept of energy, this much is consumed, and then the heat output is still quite big, 19.2, and light is smaller. So this type of lamp should be called heater, not light or lamp. But the fluorescent tube. This is the input is smaller than 10, and still from the viewpoint of energy, the rate of heat is much bigger than light, four times that. But with the concept of density, we can evaluate light is a little bigger than heat. So with the concept of density, we can say that the fluorescent tube is really a lamp. That, that is the quite interesting result. And then we compare the fluorescent tube and uh, LED lamp. So the input is much smaller here and more, relatively speaking, more light is given off from the LED lamp. So in this way, the fluorescent, uh, incandescent, fluorescent, and then LED lamp. Over the last 100 years, the development has always taken place. Now we are just in the era of the LED lamp. So that the, the paradigm of the interior lighting and also outdoor lighting should be changed in the next 10 years or 20 years or something like that. Next, I'd like to. Uh, talk about the heat and uh, <coughs> this graph is uh, one single graph that I'd like to <coughs> share with you, especially today or winter. This is the, we, we call it energy consumption chart for human input. Uh, this graph shows the Excess consumption within the human. As I mentioned in the beginning of my lecture, the core temperature of the human body, 37 degrees, almost constant. Okay? But the surface temperature sometimes becomes lower, but ne never goes up higher than 37 degrees, because always some heat is emitted from inside. Okay? So the temperature difference between the core and the surface, if it becomes bigger, it means consumption is bigger. Especially in winter time, the temperature difference should be minimized. Whenever you feel very, very cold, usually the surface temperature of the hand might be 28 degrees C. But uh, whenever you are feeling okay, usually the surface temperature must be 30 degrees, 31 degrees. For example, I'm now feeling very thermally comfortable with my lecture here, and my surface temperature of the hand is now 31.3 degrees. So I feel no discomfort with the cold. So, 
Let, let us come back to this chart. <coughs> the photographs show the air temperature, air temperature uh, <coughs> around you, okay? The room air temperature, for example, in this room. And the bathrooms show the mean radiant temperature, we call it mean radiant temperature. This is the average temperature of the surface, ceiling, wall, floor, and so on. Okay? As we measure the surface temperature of the ceiling, we measure the wall surface temperature, floor temperature, and then make the average. Okay? So depending on the combination of the surface temperature, the average surface temperature, and the air temperature, the energy consumption rate within the human body very significant. Supposing that we are in a very, very cold environment, average surface temperature is 15 degrees C and air temperature is 15 degrees C. And then human body actually consumption rate is 4.4 watt per square meter. Square meter means the surface temperature of the human body is around 1.5 to 1.8 square meter. So this is the per square meter area. Okay? So you can see that the numbers uh, increase and increase as the temperature goes down. Okay? So let us move on to the higher temperature. Okay? If the air temperature is 30 degrees C and the surface temperature is 30 degrees during the winter time, 27 2.7, 2.8, and probably 2.9 here. Again, it becomes a little bigger. The smallest point is around here. This is exactly the, the average surface temperature is a little bit higher, 24 to 25 degrees C, and a little bit lower than that. So, this is the thermal environment we experience in, in the case of a very old Japanese example is something like this. This is a wooden school building built in early, probably Showa era or something, in Chikoku Island. I had a chance to visit there and give a talk just like this. And uh, <coughs> after my lecture, one of the consultants participated in my lecture gave me this nice photograph. So this photograph, they said, it was taken in the mid-November, and uh, there is no heating in the school at that time. And I imagine that the room air temperature must have been 15 degrees C or something. And they say, this is the just after the exercise class. They, they are in the spot of the sun. It means the average surface temperature, apparent surface temperature for them must be higher than air temperature. Why they are there? Because they feel comfortable. So I think it is quite consistent with what we found so far. With thermal comfort, better comfort, less excellent consumption within the human body. So this is quite important I think, because most of the people believe that more energy use gives you more comfort, more weight. But what the nature does within the human body is quite different. Less energy consumption gives thermal comfort. So looking at this kind of things, we need to have a careful look at the built environment again. And this is why it is very important for us to have the good thermal insulation map for the houses and school buildings and so on. Because putting the good thermal insulation board outside the especially this type of building the concrete wall and then put some thermal insulation wall external 
that gives you higher surface temperature with no heat at all. And then you would be very likely to have uh, better thermal quality in such an environment. That is what we found with this kind of calculation. And uh, in relation to the human body density uh, <coughs> balance, we also made some density calculation in terms of the heating. And uh, <coughs> uh, I'd like to uh, briefly explain the key point of this uh, small calculation. <coughs> uh, the horizontal axis shows the location of the subsystem of the whole heating system. This is boiler. This is the heating apparatus of the within the room. Just, just take a look at this small room. This is the room end, and uh, this is the heating equipment heater and the boiler. So boiler, heater, and the room end, and building end. So first, take take a look at this line, black solid. In this case, very poor insulating glass, almost no insulation on the building end. So you need to input this amount of excess, in this case, with uh, liquefied natural gas. And uh, you need to have higher to have the heat for the water, then you can get almost 400 watt of excess. So input is 2,500 and output is 400. So the difference here is consumed within the boiler. The, the temperature of the fire is almost over 1,000. And water temperature is usually 50 degrees C or 60 degrees C. So the temperature difference is quite big. So there is quite big actually consumption here. Okay? So in, in that way, you, you can evaluate how much is consumed within the heater, within the room air, and within the building wall. So conven according to the conventional way of thinking about the so-called energy conser conservation in Japanese, show energy, usually they take a look at here. Well, so much is consumed, so that why don't we have a very efficient oil? Why don't we replace it? Of course, it is quite good, but only this much is consumed. Why? Because anyway, we put some pipe. The flame temperature is 1,000 degrees Celsius. So we cannot avoid the big consumption. But let, let us just leave the boiler as con being conventional, but we put some good insulation here, double glazed window, and also some good thermal insulation board here, with old boiler. That is this red line. Okay? So, we can reduce the excess input almost a half with efficient building envelope without any improvement in So this is the first priority that we should do in the improvement of the built environment. Then such an improvement of the built environment, as I mentioned, raise the average surface temperature of the whole building environment higher, then you don't need to raise the air temperature so much. As a whole, the energy value, or I should say exergy value, must be reduced very significantly. So <clears throat> I hope that this kind of idea may be realized in some of the buildings here in ICU campus and uh, especially
actually making that kind of improvement and then experience and share, then everybody, oh, maybe everybody, more and more people must realize how nice such an environment is. And it is very important for us to know it is possible for us to have such built environment with much higher level of well-being with lower input risk. That, that is the technology, soft technology together with hard technology, Is there anybody who has a quick question right now? 